Hello and good uh, morning, at least it's morning here where I'm at in uh, Southern Oregon in the Pacific Northwest in North America. This is Justin William Savoy and I have decided this morning to make a video for you about this book here called The Art of Prayer and Orthodox Anthology edited by Agumen Clar Clariton of Valamo, translated by E. Kadlobovsky and E. M. Palmer, edited with an introduction by Timothy Ware, uh, Timothy Ware, uh, Bishop Callistos Ware. This is a collection of texts and prayers drawn from Greek and Russian sources. The spiritual teaching of the Orthodox Church appears here in its classic and traditional form, but expressed in unusually direct and vivid language. The art of prayers concerned in particular with the most frequent use and best loved of all Orthodox prayers, the Jesus Prayer. It deals with the general question, what is prayer? With the different degrees of prayer, from ordinary oral prayer to unceasing prayer of the heart, with the dangers of illusion and discouragement and the need for seclusion and inner peace, Father Charitan Agumen, or abbot of the Russian monastery of Alamo, took his checks chiefly from the letters of Bishop Theophon the Recluse, one of the greatest spiritual guides of the 19th century Russia, but he used many other writers, Greek as well as Russian, and concluded with the teaching given to the monks of his own community of Alamo. The book represents the fruits of careful reading of the spiritual works over many years of monastic life and gives a fairly comprehensive record of the spiritual teaching of the Orthodox Church in its traditional monastic form, Chrysostom. <laughs> A work of lasting importance. <clears throat> I got this book um, quite some time ago, and I bought it around the same time as I was purchasing different volumes of the Philokalia. Um, as many of you may know, if you've watched my other videos, I lost a pretty extensive library. Um, uh, condo full of books and at least a storage unit, a large storage unit completely full of books. Um, so... I do have like one, I think maybe the second volume of the Philokalia um, left. And I've also been able to ha hold on to this book for quite some time. So um, I'm happy about that. Philokalia, the complete text compiled by St. Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain and St. Marcarios of Corinth. Translated from Greek and edited by G. E. H. Palmer, Philip Sherard, and Callisto Swear, Volumes 1 through 4, Volume 5 in Preparation, Writings from the Philokalia, On Prayer of the Heart, translated from the Russian text, Dubero Tulo Bai, I don't know how to pronounce that, and, uh, okay, The Art of Prayer. Introduction. Forward, the inner closet of the heart, what is prayer, the test of everything, degrees of prayer, the Jesus prayer, secret meditation, unceasing prayer, the Jesus prayer, remembrance of God, the fruits of prayer, attention and fear of God, divine grace and human effort, the burning of the spirit, the kingdom of the heart, the kingdom within us, the union of the mind and heart, war with passions, war with passions, know yourself, Work inner and external, solitude, times of desolation, illusion, humility, and love. Teachings of the Startsi of Alamo Monastery. Further reading. <clears throat> it's an introduction there by Father Chiriton and his monastery. The sources of this anthology. During the 19th century, the Russian Orthodox Church witnessed an outstanding, rich flowering of spiritual life. It was on two of the greatest writers of this movement that Chariton chiefly drew when his compiling, compiling his notebook on Bishop Theophon the Recluse and Russian Zatvornik, Zatvornik and Bishop Ignati um, Branchinov, Branchinov, extracts from the former comprised by far 
the great part of the art of prayer. So Ignati, uh, Bishop Ignati, he, he, I believe, is the author also of the book The Arena, which is a cool book on spiritual warfare and uh, Russian Orthodox monasticism. Theophon the Recluse, telling you some biographical information on Theophon the Recluse. <clears throat> so a lot of background information about these particular texts. The heart is but a small vessel, and yet dragons and lions are there, and there poisonous creatures and all their treasures of wickedness. Rough, uneven paths are there, and gaping chasms. There likewise is God. There are the angels, their, their life and the kingdom, their light and the apostles, the heavenly cities and the treasures of grace, and all things are there. So I'm still looking through the introduction, so it's a pretty um, extensive introduction here. The number of passages in the art of prayer, Theophon and Ignati refer to these breathing techniques. When they mention them, however, it is nearly always with disapproval, and they studiously refrain from all detailed descriptions. The reticence will doubtless disappoint a number of Western readers who see in hesychasm a kind of Christian yoga. What has attracted many non-Orthodox to the Jesus prayer in recent years and has fascinated them most has been precisely the bodily exercises such as approach to inner prayer would certainly not have gained the approval of Gnati and Theophon. Any indiscriminate use of the breathing exercises as they regard highly dangerous. Yeah, so I think that's kind of important to think about hesychasm and the Jesus prayer and the breathing exercises that are involved um, in the hesychastic tradition and the need for a spiritual father and guidance um, with those practices and how um, many Orthodox elders um, saw those activities as dangerous, especially for a solo practitioner and um, someone not really knowing what they're doing there. Um, so being so short and simple, the Jesus prayer can be recited at times and any place. It can be said in bus cues when working in the garden or kitchen, when dressing or walking, when suffering from insomnia, at moments of distress or mental strain, when other forms of prayer are impossible. From this point of view, it is a prayer particularly well adapted to the tensions of the modern world. It is a prayer specifically recommended to the monk who is given a rosary as a part of the habit of his profession, but it is equally a prayer for lay people, whatever their occupation in the world. It is a prayer for the hermit and recluse, but at the same time, a prayer for those engaged in active social working, nursing, teaching, visiting in prisons. It is a prayer that fits every stage of the spiritual life, from the most elementary to the most advanced. And I mentioned before how... Um, a uh, fellow physician and uh, co-worker um, had mentioned before that um, there are benefits in practicing of a mantra and how doing um, a mantra has been proven to be beneficial um, for your neurobiology, not just um, thought blocking or thought replacement, but actually the recitation of a mantra is what she referred to it as, and I immediately thought, of course, of the Jesus prayer. I'm sure reputation, reputation of positive affirmations and or some kind of saying that people continually meditate on also have that benefit. Uh, it's funny, I think now of like a science fiction reference in um, Doom, the book Doom by Frank Herbert, and how um, Paul Artreides has a phrase that he continually repeats to himself to help him face his fears. Um... Anyways, uh, it makes sense because then intrusive thoughts are not really allowed to come in. Um, so if you want to really learn more introductory stuff about the Jesus Prayer too, I welcome, recommend um, the Orthodox classic, um, The Way of the Pilgrim. And the Pilgrim continues this way. In the Inner Closet of the Heart by St. Dimitri of Rostov.
prayer should be short but often repeated. What is Prayer by Theophon the Recluse? See, in each one of these sections, two by the two particular authors that I mentioned before, Branikov and um, Theophon the Recluse, there's also tons of quotations from the Holy Fathers and the teachers of the church and uh, pat patristical quotes and whatnot, so um, really beneficial there. The first degree is bodily prayer consisting for the most part in reading and standing and making prostrations. And all this there needs to be patience, labor, and sweat, for the attention runs away. The heart feels nothing and has no desire to pray. Yet in spite of this, give yourself a moderate rule and keep it such as active prayer. To the second degree is prayer with attention. The mind becomes accustomed to collecting itself at the hour of prayer and prays. Consciously throughout, without distraction, the mind is forced upon the written words to the point of speaking them as if they were its own. The third degree is prayer of feeling. The heart is warmed by concentration so that hitherto has only been thought now becomes feeling. Where first it was contrite phrase, now it is contrition itself. And what was once a petition in words is transformed into a sensation of entire necessity. Whoever has passed through action has Thought to true feeling will pray without words, for God is God of the heart, so that the end of the apprenticeship and prayer can be said to come when in our prayers we move only from feeling to feeling. And this state reading may cease, as well as deliberate thought. Let there be only a dwelling and feeling with specific marks of prayer. Psalms, canticles, hymns, and odes, and so on, are different names for religious songs. Rising in the morning, stand as firmly as possible before God in your heart and offer your morning prayers, and then go to the work appointed to you by God without withdrawing from Him in your feelings and consciousness. In this way, you will do your work with prayers of your soul and body, but in your mind and heart you will remain with God. The Test of Everything Learn the Apostles' words about oral prayer. You must act thus, enter into the spirit of the prayers which you hear and read, reproducing them in your heart, and in this way offer them up from your heart to God, as if they had been born in your own heart under the action of the grace of the Holy Spirit. And then alone is this prayer pleasing to God. How can we attain such prayer? Ponder carefully on the prayers which you have read in your prayer book. Feel them deeply, even learn them by heart. And so when you pray, you will express that which is already deeply felt in your heart. The Prayer of the Mind and the Heart Draw down the mind into the heart. Turn to the Lord, drawing down the attention of the mind into the heart and calling upon them there. And with the mind firmly established in the heart, stand before the Lord with awe, reverence, and devotion. If we would fulfill the small rule unfailingly, then passionate desires and feelings would never arise, nor would any thought. Prayer is the primary work of the moral and religious life. The principal thing, the principal thing is to stand with the mind and the heart before God and go on standing before Him unceasingly, day and night, until the end of life. Self-moving prayers, the inner journey of the mind and heart, the approach to contemplative prayer, the Jesus prayer from various authors. So here are some of the saints that I was mentioning before. Abba Asseus, keep mindful of Gehenna, the life of Abba Philemon, Theophon the Recluse, Theophon the Recluse, Theophon the Recluse, to raise up the mind towards the Lord and to say with contrition, Lord, have mercy. Lord, grant thy blessing. Lord, help. This is to cry out in prayer to God. But if feeling towards God is born in the lives in your heart, then you will possess unceasing prayer, even though your lips recite no words and your body is not outwardly in a posture of prayer. There is a technique suggested by one of the early fathers, rhythmic breathing in time of the Jesus prayer in place 
of the use of the rosary. Well, I think that you probably get the gist of this book. It's just very good as a supplemental reading for um, the Philokalia. Um, that's what I bought it as it came out. It was kind of in the same section in the bookstore that I uh, bought the Philokalia. And uh, it's very good to go along with it, I think, as use for some devotional material during reading and contemplation times during devotions. Further readings. Here's a bunch of list of further readings, and um, so here it is. The Art of Prayer and Orthodox Anthology. This is Justin William Savoy. Thank you for joining me uh, for this video. And I hope that you find the material I've been uploading lately to be helpful and inspiring. I look forward to providing more content for you in the future. Um, I can be reached at SavoyJustin123 at gmail.com. That's S-U-V-O-Y-J-U-S-T-I-N-123 at gmail.com. Thank you so much for joining me. Be well.